This is E.T. During the early 1920s, the newspaper New York World displayed a headline, and it read this way, Did Jack Johnson ever play poker at the White House? Certainly not. Well, the implication, no black fighter would be allowed into the president's company. However, stay with me to the end of this story. A poker game did take place at the White House Library, I think it was 1921, weeks after President Warren Harding took office. And attending were Warren Harding, Republican, Albert Lasker, who was publicist for Harding's campaign, uh, Will Hayes, Postmaster General, Ned and Mrs. McLean, they owned the Washington Post, Harry Doherty, Attorney General, and Charles Forbes, head of the Veterans Bureau. During the game, Ned McLean announced that Jack Johnson, former heavyweight world champ, was about to be discharged from Leavenworth Penitentiary. Albert Lasker said, and these are his words, why, his old mother used to work for me, and he has a fine of $1,000 hanging over him, and he can't pay it. Ned McLean said, Albert, I'll give $500. You give $500, and we'll pay the fine. President Harding said, don't let that worry you. I will remit the fine. And he did. Unknown to the general public, but well understood by people in Harding's hometown of Marion, Ohio, and in Washington, D.C., was the general belief that the nation's 29th president had enough African-American blood to force him, according to the Plessy v. Ferguson court decision of 1896, to force him into segregated, in other words, so-called separate but equal, public accommodations? What, you don't believe it? In fact, this is the underlying theme of the biography, The Shadow of Blooming Grove, written by the respected, prolific historian Francis Russell. Now, that this story never went public then was due to several things. The concerted efforts by Harding's political supporters and, oddly, by the Democrat Woodrow Wilson to scoop up and destroy any evidence regarding Harding's racial background. And it was also due to a lack of general information. Broadcast radio is in its infancy and broadcast TV, at least in this country, is decades away. So the public has access then only to newspapers and magazines, all of which were careful regarding what news was going to be put out. By the way, the man who claimed to know Jack Johnson, Al Lasker, he claimed to have arranged Johnson's first serious ring encounter. That was with slugger Joe Choyensky. That was to be in Galveston, Texas, where Johnson and Lasker lived. Well, the bout with Choyensky resulted in, one, Johnson being knocked out in round three, and two, Johnson spending weeks with Joe in jail. That's because prize fighting in Texas was illegal. And during that time in jail, Joe taught Johnson how to defend himself. Now, this is verified by Jack Johnson himself. Now back to the poker game. President Harding, during his tenure, was one of the most admired and beloved chief executives. He died in office in 1923, and after that, his reputation declined, despite his success in, one, the London Treaty that postponed the inevitable Second World War, and number two, successful management of the economy. Charles Forbes, he was the one who raised Jack Johnson's name at the party, spent prison time. That's because he built the Veterans Bureau out of millions of dollars. When Harding found out, he grabbed Forbes by the neck and throttled him. Albert Lasker, the one who spoke of knowing Johnson in Galveston, went on to create, as head of Lord and Thomas, the modern advertising world. Lasker also befriended James Cox, the man Harding defeated in 1920. And Cox himself, advised by Lasker, created one of the world's most powerful media conglomerates, Cox Communications, a part of which E.T. is using 
later to upload this video. As to the man discussed at the poker party, Jack Johnson, President Harding did remit the fine, but he did not pardon him. That took decades. In 2018, President Donald Trump signed a posthumous pardon with Deontay Wilder, Wells, Lennox Lewis, a Sylvester Stallone in attendance. And it read this way, Jack Johnson, quoting Trump, a truly great fighter who had a tough life, serving 10 months in federal prison for what many view as a racially motivated injustice. And that's it. Did you like the video? Put in your comments below. Do hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. You know the drill. Thank you.